For the second time in three seasons, Nicholas Latifi is on track to finish 21st in a 20-car championship. And that is just not good enough. To be competitive in Formula 1, you have to be in the top 0.0001% of race drivers in the world. So there's no shame in saying you made it there, even if you couldn't compete. Unfortunately for the man we fondly call Gotifi, the Italian Grand Prix was the final nail in the coffin that will hold his F1 career. We all know he's bad, but just how bad is he? Let's check out some numbers and look back at what has been an undistinguished career. At the end of the summer break, Nicholas Latifi believed that with an upgraded Williams chassis, he was showing he deserves to stay for a fourth season in F1. A perennial backmarker since being given his Williams chance in 2020, Latifi has scored points in only two of his 53 starts so far, at back-to-back -back races in Hungary and Belgium in 2021. That is the same Belgian Grand Prix that saw no laps raced and that George Russell, his teammate at the time, finished second. However, the Canadian sensed improvement since the FW44 was upgraded and can point to setting the quickest time in FP3 on a drying track and a fastest sector in Q1, both at the Hungarian Grand Prix. I feel much more comfortable in the position I'm in, showing up at the weekends knowing, okay, if I drive the way I know I can drive and get as much as I can out of the car, then the performance is where it needs to be, which I think is deserving of staying in F1, Latifi told the media. Just getting to Formula 1 is hard enough, but in 2019, Latifi's second place finish in the Formula 2 championship was enough for Williams to take a chance on him. The driver who beat him that year was Nick de Vries, but we'll come back to the Dutchman shortly. For now, let's stick with Latifi. Nick may have been the better choice just on pure driving skill, but F1 is about far more than just skill. In 2019, Williams were in a terrible place financially. They were actively looking for a buyer of the team and were in desperate need of capital to keep them afloat. It was a very similar situation to the one at Haas that led to Mick Schumacher and Nikita Mazepin getting seats in 2021. Schumacher had his father's name and sponsors to go with it, and Mazepin had his father's money. In Latifi's case, it was the two-hit combo of his father's mother and the backing of the Bank of Canada as a sponsor. Pay drivers might not be so much of a problem in Formula 1 anymore, but they definitely still exist and Latifi is a prime example. Since Latifi has been at Williams, the team has changed hands and the financial situation is far better than it was, and now it's time for the team to get competitive. Unfortunately for Latifi, it's the man that beat him to the F2 title that is back to haunt him, Nick De Vries. At the Italian Grand Prix, a low-key FP1 rookie spot for De Vries seemed nothing out of the ordinary. A diagnosis of appendicitis for Alex Albon and an emergency surgery was more out of the ordinary though, and the Mercedes backup De Vries was ready to take a seat in a Williams for the weekend. Quick side note, Albon suffered respiratory failure and was treated in intensive care following the appendix surgery at the weekend. The 26-year-old had an operation on Saturday but suffered post-operative anaesthetic complications and was put on a ventilator. Albon came off the ventilator on Sunday morning and Williams says he will be home soon. We, and I'm sure you all, wish him a speedy recovery and look forward to seeing him racing again soon. Nicholas Latifi crossed the finish line in 15th in the Italian Grand Prix. Only four dropouts and Kevin Magnussen finished below him in Monza, while Williams stand-in Nick De Vries scored points and finished 9th. Despite his own performance, Latifi wasn't surprised that temporary teammate De Vries scored points. That's where the car was supposed to finish. I think if we'd been at the front, we could have finished there too. But our car is not really suitable for racing. It's more stay where you drive. Unfortunately for Latifi, losing out to a temporary stand-in who'd only driven the car in a test session back in Spain in May and in FP3 was the last straw for pretty much everyone. The excuses have run out and the Canadian is being told it's time to leave. Before we look at what the F1 world has to say about Latifi, Let's look at just how bad he has been. Until Silverstone this season, Latifi sat 21st in the 20 car championship, behind Aston Martin's two race stand in Nico Hülkenberg. Fortunately for Latifi, though, the first lap multi car crash meant there were six retirements, the most in a single race so far this season, and he was able to finish 12th to pull himself up the drivers' championship leaderboard. Nick de Vries scoring points in Italy put him back in 21st position, though. But that doesn't tell the whole story. The best comparison we can make is to the man in the same machinery as him, Alex Albon. 
When you put them head to head in qualifying, Alex has beaten Nicholas 13 times in the 15 qualifyings they were both in. From those qualifying sessions, Albon has an average grid position, that is where they start the race of 15.4. Latifi's is 17.06. That is the worst in the championship. In terms of actual pace he's missing, Latifi's lap times are about 1% short of the car's perfect lap times. Alex is only missing about 0.2% of the car's perfect lap time out there, meaning he is driving the car far closer to what it's capable of. In races they both started, Latifi has averaged 15.77 position. Albon has managed 12.62. Again, Latifi is the worst in the championship. Of those 15 races, he's only outclassified Albon three times, and two were thanks to Alex getting a DNF. You could actually argue that Latifi has managed to go backwards since joining Formula 1. In 2020, he finished 21st in the championship, thanks to Hulkenberg stepping in as a backup in a few races. But if George Russell hadn't replaced the COVID-stricken Hamilton in Sakir, he would have beaten the Brit in the Drivers' Championship that year. In 2021, discounting Russell's second-place finish in Belgium, Latifi's average finishing position was only 1.5 places worse than his teammate. Then, this season, well, we've already spoken about that, but it's definitely getting worse than better. The wider Formula 1 community were already unconvinced by Latifi, but the loss to his teammate in Italy has pushed the media to finally turn on the Canadian. The criticism isn't cruel, it's just the honest truth that after three years of racing, Latifi has had his chance and has failed to prove he's up to the task. Damon Hill is one who has no sympathy for Nicholas Latifi. The Canadian's performance at the Italian Grand Prix showing he hasn't got the pace to stay in Formula 1. Hill says he does not deserve to retain his Williams seat for the 2023 championship. I'm sorry, but this is the way it is, the 1996 world champion told Sky Sports. In this case, Nicholas hasn't got the pace he needs to stay in that position in Formula 1. He's had some good moments, but along comes a guy who's not even driven in the Grand Prix before, and he's done a fantastic job. Social media wasn't any kinder to the driver either. A number of F1 fans urged Williams to immediately fire Latifi and replace him with the Dutchman De Vries. Hoping to see De Vries in the Williams again in Singapore, one wrote, They need to immediately sack Nicholas Latifi after this embarrassment, another chimed in. Despite everything being said about him and the pain of knowing his Formula 1 career must now be over, Latifi managed to be complimentary of De Vries' weekend. Asked what he thought about being beaten by a driver who was only told he could drive just before FP3, Latifi replied, What do you think? Before adding, he quickly picked up a good pace. He jumped in the car for FP3 and it was quite impressive how fast he went straight away. Everyone knows that Nick is a fast rider. So yeah, it is impressive what he's done. While Latifi's poor performance has been an anchor for Williams this season, there is an upside for the team from the Italian Grand Prix. They found a very obvious replacement in Nick de Vries. The Dutchman is currently tied to Mercedes and has been patiently waiting for Hamilton to finally retire so he can take his spot. As a customer of Mercedes though, Williams would be the perfect spot for him to fill the time between now and whenever Hamilton decides to leave. If Williams are lucky, Mercedes may even pay them for the pleasure of having him on the team and giving him some valuable F1 racing experience. His future teammate certainly thinks he did enough to deserve a chance. Speaking in the post-race press conference after taking third at Monza, Russell paid tribute to De Vries and backed him for a race next season. He obviously did an excellent job, Russell told the media. Throughout all of our karting careers, the three of us, that's Russell, Max Verstappen and Charles Leclerc, raced against him and knew him very well. He was always one of the very best, and there's no doubt he's deserving of a place in Formula 1. That's just how the sport is sometimes. There are 20 drivers, not everybody gets an opportunity, but certainly now, he's proved everything he has to. While Nicholas Latifi has had a disappointing Formula 1 career, you still have to respect him for making it this far. Even with the help of his family's money, he still needed skill and determination to get to where he is now and nothing can ever take that away from him. Besides, it isn't the end of the world, he could always find a seat in NASCAR. Want to know more about what's going on in F1? Then click the video on your screen and we'll see you there.